Hi, I'm Jason and welcome to my shop. In this video I'd like to show you a device I've been working on for the last year for controlling a box joint jig and I call it the Digibox. So here's the Digibox controller. There's a sli slide switch on the side to turn it on and it defaults to a 1 8 inch step. This controller is designed to work with a blade of an 8 inch width or bigger in 8 inch steps. So that means just about any standard data set will work. It defaults to the 1 8 inch step and it can go all the way up to 1 inch. The controls are very simple. There's a zero button to use for when calibrating. This advanced button will move the carriage to the right at the increment steps that you have selected and it will double this distance. So if you have it set for 1 8 it's actually going to move a quarter to allow you to have the 1 8 inch gap in between each finger joint. The rewind button will actually reset it all the way back to the beginning of where you started. There's also a cow left and a cow right button that allows you to calibrate the boards to the blade. So you don't have to get the board exactly right in the clamp. You can just calibrate the jig to it. If I hit the advance button, you'll see that the carriage will advance to the right and it's advanced a quarter inch. At the same time, our count will keep track of how many times we've moved and it'll just keep advancing for as many times as we press. If I want to return the carriage back, I hit rewind and it will return the carriage all the way back to the starting point. The cow buttons will allow you to cow the carriage in 1 one sixty-fourth inch increments. Once you're happy with the calibration, you hit zero and it's zeroed out and ready to cut. To set the step with, you simply start with the device turned off, hold down the zero and rewind buttons, and turn it on. You'll now have a set step size menu that allows you to select the step in 1 8 inch increments. Use the cow left and right buttons to select. So it goes from 1 8 to quarter, 3 8 half inch, and so forth. Once you're at the size that you want, let's say quarter inch, you hit the advance button to select it. The box will reset and now you see the step has been set to a quarter inch. To go back to one eighth or just the reset, you simply power cycle. And now we're back to one eighth. The key to using this controller is utilizing a 16 TPI all thread or sometimes known as 16 turns per inch or threads per inch depending on your preference. And that means that one complete turn of this threaded rod gives me one sixteenth inch of movement. By using that, we can run the stepper motor at specific intervals to get those precise, those precise movements. My box joint jig is based on several different designs that I found. And I kind of mashed those all together to develop a, a, joint, a, a box joint jig that would work really well for my setup. The only main addition that I, that I made was adding pairs of bearings at both ends. These are ball bearing base bearings and to the rod and that allowed for a much smoother turning operation. Okay, now we're going to do a demo cut using an eighth inch step. I have an eighth inch flat tooth ground blade in my table saw. So that means that the kerf is exactly one eighth inch and since it's flat tooth I'll have a, a flat cut in the bottom of the kerf. I'm using two scrap pieces of three quarter pine. I've already set my blade height based on one of these boards and it's cutting just proud, just proud of this so we'll have a, just a little sticking out. So I'll take the boards and put them in my jig and I'm going to move the jig up so that I can set this is close to the blade as I as possible. And that looks pretty good. I'll clamp this in place. Move the move the jig back. Now I'm ready to cut. We've already set to zero. So now all we have to do is turn on the saw and cut. Alright. So I run one just just to clear it. Now I'm going to advance over and cut. Advance over and cut. Okay, and I've just cut a couple of test joints here, or test cuts. As you can see, we've got a fairly good fit. 
it's not completely tight, but it's pretty good. And that can be adjusted. It also depends on your blade. Depends on the quality of the blade and how accurate your blade is as far as its eighth inch width is concerned. Okay, so that's a, just kind of a basic demo of how the uh, Digibox works. Uh, I still have a little bit of tweaking to do on the firmware. And, uh, and I gotta do some final, final uh, uh, design uh, changes to the hardware itself. Not much. It's, it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, but I'm hoping that this is going to spark some interest. This video will spark some interest. And, uh, and I'd like to make this available as, a, as an actual product. I'll probably actually sell it through my electronics company, RPC Electronics. I haven't quite decided on that yet. But I do plan to make this a product. And I'd be interested in the comments below if anyone is interested in purchasing one of these. Let me know. I don't have a target price on it just yet. Um, I will go ahead and say it will probably be well under $150, um, but probably not under 100 So that kind of gives a, an idea of, of how much that I think it's going to cost. So anyways, uh, leave your comments below. Let me know if there's something you'd be interested in. If you're not, please let me know what would possibly, what kind of changes would make you interested in it. And uh, those who just outright would not be interested in it, let me know why, why you wouldn't be interested in it. Um, I'd like to know, I, I've been designing electronics products for almost 15 years now and I've never found the, the secret formula for why something does well and why something doesn't even when I have a lot of good feedback from people saying, oh yeah, if, I, if you had that available today, I'd buy it. So, so I just would like to know um, if this is a viable thing. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.